multiplying fractions like a genius. I want you to get this new technique, so only watch this film if you've really got it with multiplying fractions. And that includes simplifying your fraction to its lowest terms at the end. Up to now, we've said top times top over bottom times bottom. And then we simplify. Our numerator and denominator here are both in the six times table, so we can divide by six. And that gives us one over five. When we can't reduce any more, like here, we're done. That's great, it works, it's what you need. But some students don't spot that our 6 over 30 fraction can be reduced, or they make a mistake doing it. And how about when the numbers are bigger than this example? Would it seem more difficult to you? Here's something to help you. Sometimes you can get to your answer with less multiplication and without reducing at the end. It sounds like magic. How is that even possible, you ask? Here's how. Instead of multiplying first, then simplifying those big numbers at the end, you can simplify your fractions at the beginning, when the numbers are nice and small, because it's easier to do then. And I'm all about making math easy. Let's look at that first example again. We can reduce at the start if you have numbers in a numerator and a denominator that have a common factor. We have a numerator and a denominator that are the same. If we divide this top and this bottom by 3, they each change to 1. This is also called cancelling. We've just cancelled the need to multiply by 3. Great! And look at this. 2 and 10 are both even numbers. We can reduce these as well. Divide by 2. Here we get 1 and in 10 there's 5 twos. Nice! Top times top over bottom times bottom. 1 over 5. We got straight to it this time. Quick and easy. And if you like that technique, feel free to click that button. Another example with a bit more thinking needed. Ooh, is that a scary one? Well, yeah, if we go straight to multiplication, it certainly is. But we can work smarter instead. Think about your tables. Look for a numerator and a denominator that fit together. We're looking for numbers that crop up in the same multiplication table. We've got 9 here and 27 here. 27 is in the 9 times table. Divide by 9. We get 1 here and in 27 there's 3 9s. And here we've got 4 and 32. Well that's handy. 32 is in the 4 times table. That gives us 1 here and in 32, there's eight fours. Now that looks so much better, doesn't it? One times any number means the number itself. We've got three eighths. Fantastic. You've got to like the simplicity of this trick. Please note, though, that this is only for multiplication. Keep in mind, when you're doing these problems, that multiplying fractions questions are often designed expecting you to use this technique. We look for a multiples link in a numerator and a denominator. We reduce as far as we can. Then we multiply out. But if you don't use it, you will slow right down, as you can see from this problem. Imagine multiplying that one out and then having to reduce it at the end. No thanks, I'll take the smart path every time. Any numerator can work with any denominator to reduce the fractions you have to multiply. Here, 12 is in the 3 times table. I can reduce this whole fraction here. First, we reduce as much as we can, 
Then we do the multiplication. If you can still reduce at the end, do it. All right then, now you know what I know. I want you to apply it in some multiplying fractions problems. Next time, I'll show you how to understand and do fractions division.